Let's see if it starts. <laughs> Hi there, smart drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test. Welcome back to take two of the live stream, and we're going to see whether it's working here or not momentarily. It'll come up on YouTube for me. There is a bit of a delay here, but uh, we had some technical challenges. Uh, I have got a new computer. Yes, it's a lovely computer, but as many of you know, changing it over for the uh, OBS and the applications and all of those sorts of things, it doesn't just move it over and move all your settings over too, so it can be a bit of a challenge. As well, I'm using a uh, new camera and hooking that in and seeing if that's working, and obviously that didn't work before. So <clears throat> it says, okay, so you've got video. I haven't got video for whatever reason, but excellent. Uh, you can hear me all right, Corey? Perfect. Okay, so we're... <laughs> We're, we're going to get going here half an hour late, and I do apologize for technical uh, delays that I've had. Uh, I go 80 on 50 miles an hour with cops stop me. Yes, the cops will stop you, Gladys. It's only a matter of time, Gladys, before you get stopped. All right, so for those of you going for a road test, those of you looking to get your license, what uh, vehicle are you driving? What class of license are you going for? Leave a comment down in the comment for those of you watching on the replay. Uh, leave a comment about what license class you're going for and what vehicle you are driving as well. If you like the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to hit those thumbs up button. All of that helps us out and uh, gets us, uh, you know, helping lots of people because that's what we're trying to do is to help people get a license, help people to start a career as a truck or bus driver, and all of that is really great. And what we're going to do, Mr. Natrevin, thank you so much for that. God bless you as well. Uh, thank you for the super chat. That is really awesome. And Mr. Natrevin, if I'm certain, passed uh, the road test this week, so that's really great. Congratulations on that. I know why my live stream hasn't started yet because I scheduled it for 6.30. So I'm just getting started here and making sure everything is working this time <laughs> as opposed to last time. I was watching, you know, you should, uh, you, you really shouldn't watch uh, gaming channels about how to set up OBS because they're not helping. But um, is, does the video, just for those of you who are watching, does the video seem to be a bit clearer than normal? Uh, I'm hoping that it is because, you know, I spent, <laughs> I got a new computer, I got a new camera, I'm hoping that it's all much better than what it was. Anyway, Peter, how can I get my friends to stop distracting me when I am driving with them? Peter, how many of your friends are in the vehicle with you? Uh, just answer that question for me and then we'll, uh, we'll answer that question for you. Live in nine minutes. I'm not sure what's going on with my live stream here, but anyway, it's working. So tonight we're going to talk about highway driving. I had a couple of uh, comments in the last couple of weeks uh, that people uh, wanted me to talk about highway driving because people who are going for uh, the license or have started um, just driving and have a new license are have some trepidation around driving on highways because of high speeds, and I can understand that. It's 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 easier to drive at slower speeds than it is to drive at higher speeds. So know that we're going to talk tonight about highway speeds and some of the things that you can do. So, okay, sometimes three or two, Peter has his friends in the car. Now, Peter, what I might suggest to you is to limit the number of people that you have in the car to one because uh, the more people you've got, and this is, you know, studies have shown that this is true, that passengers and particularly your friends are going to distract you um, so what I suggest is maybe you might want to limit it to just one passenger, maybe two at the most. Okay, Artessa, it is so clear, better resolution. That's awesome because that's really <laughs> what I was going for, Artessa. Uh, you know, um, I just, I, I like my new computer, but there are some transition pains in terms of getting everything over, okay? Uh, Michael, yes, I did schedule the live stream for six. However, we were having some technical difficulties with getting OBS set up, so I was trying to get the video clearer and I think we've got that going here so I did get started a bit earlier I just wanted to make sure that everything was working all right and just to remind you as well that uh, I do a live stream of this uh, on Facebook at noon as well so if you don't get this one you can definitely go to the one at noon oh Mr. Mitrevin I passed my CDL test three months ago now thinking about buying my truck but not sure how 
will it be with e log uh mr Ch i think it's going to be fine with e log e log is just a different way of doing log books i think it's going to be fine uh what kind of truck are, are have you started shopping for trucks yet uh what kind of truck are you looking at and those types of things just uh leave a comment down there for me farah <laughs> Farrah, I'm old enough to remember Farrah Fawcett, who you may or may not be named after. After making a turn, do you have to automatically adjust to the miles per hour for that road? If not, is it an automatic fail? Yes, Farrah, you either need to go the speed posted speed limit or you need to do the flow of traffic, whichever is less. You, after you finish your turn, you need to get the vehicle back up to the posted speed limit as quickly as possible. All right, uh, Michael. No, Michael, what is happening with multi, multiple passengers? And this is why some GDL programs, graduated driver's licensing programs, limit the number of passengers that you can have in the vehicle with you. Uh, many GDL programs will limit uh, the passengers that you can have in a vehicle to um, uh, immediate family. So mom, dad, grandpa, grandma and siblings you can only have those in the vehicle so uh, that's one of the things that they do because they've shown and proved that the more friends you have in the vehicle the more distracting they're going to be and that's the reason for that uh, how do i pass a road test well mekdi you are in the right place on the youtube channel here the smart drive test youtube channel definitely go through the um, playlists at the front because uh, there's a playlist, Pass Your Road Test Smart. If you go through that, that will give you all the information, skills, and abilities that you need to be successful on passing a road test. So definitely have a look at that. All right. Uh, okay, Mr. Netrevin, Cascania 2013 with automatic 40K, 60K. It's in Illinois, Chicago area. Okay, that's a good vehicle because that's a Freightliner, right? Um, 2013, I've always been partial to Freightliners. They're a good work truck. Uh, is there any reason that you're going with an automatic? Um, just leave a comment there. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about automatic transmissions. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got stuck on automatic transmissions. On highway driving, we're going to work with new drivers and give them some skills and strategies for working on, for driving on highways because I've had some comments from smart drivers that they've had some difficulty transitioning to the highway because the highway tends to be they're going at higher speeds, they have trouble merging out onto the highway and those types of things. So we're gonna give you some tips tics, uh, tips, and techniques and strategies to transition out to driving on the roadway. Okay, so uh, Mr. Smile, first car ever, brand mileage. Uh, Mr. Smile, I tend to be very much a Toyota Honda person, so that tends to be my recommendation in terms of brands, but I will admit that I am very biased when it comes to Toyota or Honda. Other smart drivers may have some suggestions too about brands of vehicles. Uh, one of the recommendations that I do give to new drivers in terms of purchasing their first vehicle, uh, when you find a vehicle that you want to buy, take it to an independent mechanic, an independent automotive technician and get them to do a uh, inspection on it for you. It costs you about $100 and they will give you a neutral opinion about the vehicle, whether it needs brakes, how worn the brakes are, whether the brakes are like 60%. Uh, whether it needs new tires, they'll be able to look at the exhaust and the undercarriage and all types of things that you just simply can't get into. So for about $100, take it to an independent automotive technician and get an inspection done. And that's one of the things that I really recommend if you're buying a second-hand vehicle. Okay, Unesso, uh, is it good to turn right after you stop at a red light during your road test or is it better to wait till the light is green? Uh, Unesso, you can turn right on a red light during a road test. And there is a video here on the channel about turning right on red lights. But what I suggest to you is if you're not comfortable or it's just really busy and you you just don't feel comfortable with that, you can wait until the green light. They cannot, uh, I can't say that definitively, but some examiners may dock you, but for the most part, you can't be docked for waiting for the green light to turn right, okay? Okay, and that was the same thing. Andy's question had the same thing. Hi, Samantha, how are you? Uh, awesome that you're here after we had some technical challenges of getting the live feed up after my new computer and my new camera and uh, we're trying to get things working here so <laughs> I'm back that's awesome that's awesome 
Yes, Gladys, that is, uh, yes, you have to stop first. <laughs> Absolutely. You can't just go around the corner, for sure. You have to stop. You have to check and make sure it's clear to go and then proceed around the corner. So uh, first thing we're going to look at here, um, I've, I've been trying to catch up here. Uh, what is going on? Of course, nothing's working now. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I can't get it to work, but we'll get it to work here. Okay, pull that down there, get that up there. All right, uh, one of the things that I have been able to do this week is I've been able to get the people who have passed the road test onto the YouTube, onto the Smart Drive Test website. And I've done that this week, and I'm trying to catch up on that. I'm trying to be more on top of that because, unfortunately, I've let it go for a couple of weeks. So, yes. And sorry, I'm just fiddling around with the website here. There we go. Okay. Excellent, and our spammer is back. Now, I would just like to make a comment about that because I've had a couple of smart drivers send me emails and I do really appreciate people making comments and trying to help improve stuff and whatnot. And the person who is spamming the channel here, I am talking to you at this point. I don't know if you think that maybe I am not, there are a particular group of people that I'm not helping. I, I refuse to use the word, the R word or the S word because I'm neither of those and generally the channel is about empowering people to pass a road test so I do uh, you know if you do have an issue you do have a problem please send me an email and I'll help you out uh, and one of the other things that maybe is a possibility of why I'm getting spammed on my channel here and on my feed on my live feed is that um, you think that I'm not answering all of the comments. So what I've done is I've implemented a policy here on the Smart Drive Test channel. When I answer comments, I'm now using your full username. I'm not going to use part of it because I think I know who you are and I'm trying to be friendly and those types of things. And so if anybody gets comments, uh, I'm just using all of the username now just so that I'm trying to answer everybody. And the other, just one other point about that, um, which is gone now, and I apologize about that. It'll come back to me. Okay, Yoneso, you are very welcome. Uh, William Vincent, uh, I'm a class A. Can you do more videos concerning CMV in traffic? I am merging, video is clear, just buffs a little bit. Yeah, okay, thanks William, I appreciate that. Yes, and William, I'm certainly going to get more videos up on CDL. That is certainly my thrust uh, before, probably after Christmas in the beginning of the New Year's. I'm gonna start doing more videos on CDL. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, uh, Riley, how are you? You are most welcome, Riley, and thank you for your compliment. I really appreciate that. Uh, Farah, yes, they can. Okay, if you did it repeatedly, they can fail you for that. And as well, Farah, the other point that I'll make is, is that you cannot cross over a solid white line, and most bicycle lanes are separated from the main lane of traffic by a solid white line, so know that. Okay? Umar, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome back. I appreciate that. Okay, so I've got a presentation for you here. I'm going to kick over to the presentation. I'm going to give the presentation and we'll get going on that here. Uh, I'm still having a few technical challenges and I do uh, appreciate your patience in uh, helping me <laughs> get through the growing pains of a new computer. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love my new computer, but uh, getting everything transitioned over here is, is a bit of a challenge. Okay. Raquel. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Raquel. I'm really glad that the um, resolution is much better. Okay, so here we go on the transition. So tonight we're talking about highway driving. And um, my name is Rick August. For those of you who don't know me, those of you who are new to the live feed, uh, I do have a PhD. I've been a driving instructor since 1997. Most of my driving instruction career has been with CDL vehicles, uh, mostly trucks and buses. However, I have done a lot of work with new drivers working with cars, as you can tell by the number of videos on the YouTube channel, as well 
uh, I've been a, a driver rehabilitation specialist who worked with people who have uh, debilitating crashes, uh, had uh, you know a stroke or those types of things, and we're trying to return to driving, and did that for a while as well. So I have a fair bit of an extensive driver instruction career. So that's basically me. I just get over here to the presentation and then I can page down. All right, so one of the things that I did on the YouTube channel was I put a new playlist up yesterday. This is for final day's road test preparation. So for smart drivers who are coming up to their uh, a few days before the road test, this playlist is something that you should just review. There's some information that maybe some fundamentals that you should go back to that I would suggest as well. Uh, you know, tips that you should take into consideration and as well, the what you need to bring to road test day. So you need to bring your glasses, you need to bring your license, your, your learner's license, you need to bring money and anything else that you might need, whether you need a drink of water, it'll also tell you the pre-trip inspection and those types of things that you need to do prior to going into the road test. Now, the other point that I'll make about this in terms of leading up to road test day is book a mock road test. If you're not taking driving lessons with a professional driving instructor, book a road test seven to 10 days before your driving exam. That way, a driving instructor will give you feedback about the parts of your driving abilities that may need some uh, need some more work before you go in for your driving exam. And saying that, book your, your mock road test about a month out because a lot of these driving schools are busy and you're gonna need to book it about a month out so you can have it seven to 10 days before your road test. So look for that playlist over on the YouTube channel as well. All right, so today we're talking about highway driving and for many of us who are a little bit older, maybe, and you know, all of the smart drivers as well, I would posit, uh, road trips, we all have memorable road trips that we took with our parents when we were kids. We went to Disneyland, we went uh, to the Swiss Alps, we went to Uluru in Australia. We drove somewhere with our family and we went on these great trips with our family. And so highway driving is one of the great adventures of North America, of Europe, it's all kinds of places that it's really great to drive these places. So how do we get out on the highway and how do we start driving and feeling comfortable after we get our license? And there's different ways of doing that because obviously some of us who just got our license, uh, we feel intimidated driving at high speeds because the speeds on some of these highways is in excess of 60 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, and some of them, it can be 120 kilometers an hour, 75 miles an hour, even 80 miles an hour. So it can be really, really fast on some of these highways. And you have to implement different strategies and techniques to be able to successfully drive on a highway. So know that. And at faster speeds, following distance becomes paramount. You have to manage your following distance because your reaction time is going to be less because you're driving at a higher speed. So for example, when you're driving at 50 kilometers an hour, you're traveling at approximately 18 meters per second. If you move that up to 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, you're now traveling at uh, 27 meters per second. You're approximately every second, every two seconds, you're covering a football field at 100 kilometers an hour, 62 miles an hour. So that's a lot. So you have to manage speed. So under ideal conditions out on the highway, you want to follow at two to three seconds. And I put the video up here for you on following distance. You also wanna look farther down the road. You wanna try and interpret, You well not try to, you want to interpret traffic patterns along the highway and freeway and interstate where you're driving. And you need to get the big picture. You need to figure out what's going on the other side of the road as well because if there's a crash, on the other side of the roadway, the traffic in front of you is gonna slow down because most people are rubbernecking. So know that as well, okay? Shoulder checking, it is paramount that you shoulder check and continue to do this after you get your driver's license. Hold your course. So hold the steering wheel, that's what I mean, hold the steering wheel. It's a sharp, quick movement of your head because if you linger too long and looking and shoulder checking out, uh, the vehicle is going to deviate out of your lane. So quick snap of the head before you shoulder check or before you move your head and then just quick snap of the head and have a look. All right, now the adjusting the mirrors. Now there is the SAE, this uh, standard automotive engineers method of, of adjusting the mirrors so that you can be out on the highway with them. And I don't, I'm not on board with that method of checking the mirrors because it leads you to the false pretense that you 
can see all the way around your vehicle without turning your head and without looking and I don't I'm not on board with that so just adjust your mirrors as you normally would make sure that you continue to shoulder check and if you do have physical abilities or, or physical challenges you can't move your hips or you can't move your head or whatnot then go and get some convex mirrors and as well uh, just on that note uh, next week I should have the smart drive test uh, I Amazon affiliate store up so you can go over to my store the smart drive test store on Amazon and uh, get those convex mirrors and stick them onto your wing mirrors and that will help you out in terms of driving and being able to see excuse me into some of the blind spots and whatnot around your vehicle all right, bridges, tunnels, and overpasses. Uh, for those of us in the northern hemisphere, we're coming into winter time. And keep in mind that bridges and overpasses freeze first. And last week I talked about where you can find ice when the temperature dips to zero, 36 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees, uh, or not 40, zero degrees Celsius, sorry. <laughs> So bridges and overpasses, know that it's going to be dark. Know that it, if it's cold, it's going to be icy under the overpass. Uh, don't get distracted by the scenery when you're out on, on the highway because a lot of these bridges are going over rivers and other scenic areas and those types of things is not going to be kind of ugly like it is right there in that urban landscape with the big concrete overpass. So try not to get distracted by the scenery. And as well, know that overpasses on freeways and highways are often going to be where the on-ramps and off-ramps are going to be. So pay particular attention when you're at these areas because this is where other traffic is going to be merging out onto the roadway and you're either going to need to slow down to allow them to merge out onto the highway or freeway or you're need going to need to change lanes and as well if you're going into tunnels and there's usually usually lots of warning that you're coming into a tunnel make sure you take your sunglasses off before you head into the tunnel all right passing when you're out on highways and roadways, you're going to have to pass because there's obviously other traffic that's not going to be going as fast as you. Oftentimes, it's bigger, larger vehicles, trucks and buses and RV units and those types of things. Usually, it's not Greyhound because usually Greyhound is going to beat the band and you're not going to be able to pass them. So, <laughs> when to pass? Make sure that you have lots and lots of room to pass another vehicle when you're out on the highways or freeways. Uh, if you have to go into the opposing lane of traffic and if you can wait lots of these two lane roads will now have passing lanes so wait for the passing lane you'll see in this video here on passing and overtaking that the truck passed into the opposing lane of traffic and five minutes down the road there was a passing lane where the truck wouldn't have had to go out and risk being in the opposing lane of traffic and know that even in a passenger vehicle you're going to be out there for 20 or 30 seconds in that opposing lane of traffic so you need a lot of distance uh, to pass successfully on a two-lane road and so it might even just be a fact that you could wait five minutes uh, for a passing lane to come up and then you don't have to do that all right all right and predicting road user behavior and I talked about this with bridges and overpasses when you're driving on a freeway there's going to be a bridge or overpass and that's where traffic is going to be coming on to the highway or freeway and they're going to be get off on the highway or freeway you also have to predict other road users behavior people who are speeding you're gonna to have to stay in the right lane and other traffic that's going too slow you're gonna to have to be able to get around them and if you're on highways and those types of things you're gonna to have to watch for slow moving vehicles tractors and particularly in urban or rural areas and those types of places so have a look for all of those different kinds of traffic as well and see this video on traffic predictions on freeways which talks about big trucks and them coming out onto the highway and having to move over and those types of things and then last not last but one of the other factors that I want would, would like you to do and like you to consider is if you're driving out on the roadway figure out how to use cruise control it's going to be like me learning with my new computer and going through some of the technical challenges at the beginning it's going to be a little bit weird using cruise control however cruise control is going to eliminate and reduce distracted driving and it's going to reduce fatigue because you don't have to monitor your speed and what I recommend for new drivers who are out on a highway say that the speed limit is 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour the traffic flow is going to be 65 or 68 miles an hour or 110 kilometers an hour simply set the cruise control a few miles less or a few kilometers less an hour than what the traffic flow is and that way you're just going to be able to stay in the right lane and you're not and all the other traffic is just going to pass you now no on a long road trip it's not about driving faster that's going to get you there faster at a, it's not 
going to be driving a higher speed that's going to get you there faster. What's going to get you there faster is maintaining a higher average speed over the course of the day. So the more you can stay on cruise control, the faster you're going to get there. And as well, when you're passing on cruise control on a multi-lane road, as you can see here in the image, don't take it off cruise control. Just leave it on cruise control, go past the car and change lanes back into the other lane of traffic. On a multi-lane road, you're not in that big of a hurry. So you don't have to take it off cruise and speed up. And as well, the other benefit of cruise control is you're going to improve your fuel economy. And But if you're taking it off and on cruise all the time, then you're just going to negate that. So learn how to use cruise control. And let me tell you, it's going to make your drive a lot more relaxing if you're driving out on the highway with cruise control. All right, so good luck on your road test and I'll take answers, uh, questions, any questions about highway driving, any questions that anybody has about getting a, a license or a CDL license. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about all of that. And we're back. Just switch back over here. All right. Okay, Carlos, what if there is no passing lanes on a highway? Carlos, there's almost always passing lanes on a highway now. And one of the reasons they put passing lanes up is because they learned 20 or 30 years ago that passing was one of the most dangerous maneuvers that drivers could execute. And unfortunately, because of that, they began to try to correct that with passing lanes. And a lot of two lane roads will now have passing lanes. If they don't have passing lanes, then you're just gonna have to wait for an opening. And I'll tell you a couple of years ago when I went back driving truck long haul, I was a bit rusty and I was coming down number six from uh, Edmonton back through to Kamloops. And I got the big truck down coming down a two lane highway and I was coming down the hill and I got up beside this other big truck. So there's two rigs coming down the hill and I'm trying to get past this other truck. And I was like neck and neck with this truck and a car come around the curve and up the hill and the car. And I was like, okay, am I going to keep going and force this guy off the road? Or am I going to get on the brakes and try and haul in behind this guy? And just as that thought went through my head, the car pulled off the side of the road. Well, I just kept going at that point, but it was an error that I made because I was rusty and I didn't realize that, you know, in a big truck, when you're trying to pass on a two lane road, uh, you can be out in the passing lane for a couple of minutes. So yeah, it's a long, long time out there. Okay, Yoneso, the hardest part I have on driving on the highway is getting off the acceleration lane and onto the highway without running out of space before the acceleration lane ends. So what you wanna do, Yoneso, as soon as you get on that acceleration lane, you want to get on the, on the brakes, hard on the brakes, because uh, as long as you're off the highway and you're on the deceleration lane, then you can just get on the brakes and bring it to a stop really quickly. So just like, <laughs> like lift it up and slow it down as hard as you can, all right? Okay, the other thing I don't have up here. There we go. We'll get that back. And there we go. Okay. Okay, who else is a question here? Samantha. Hey, Sam, how's it going? Are you still here? <laughs> Michael, claustrophobic in the back seat when I'm with my family and I'm trying to play a video game and some idiot stops in the freeway all at once. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty tough to ride in a car, especially if you're not looking up. Okay. Mark, yes, it is really live. <laughs> it is really live. We got all the we got it working out. So King Monty, my friend uh, Rohan drives drunk. Is that legal? King Monty, that is not legal in any sense of the imagination. And if he gets caught, the penalties are severe okay mr mctravin i am now driving an automatic but pass on mac eating 10 speed i need to leave one hand for cigarettes and coffee <laughs> all right automatic transmission it is uh you did or you didn't get a comment michael hey sam how's it going how's is it snowing in the bronx yet sam Carlos. Okay. Riley, being cramped in New York City, sometimes there comes a time when there's a sharp turn. How do new drivers negotiate turning sharply on a highway? Okay. Riley, one of the things you want to look at is you want to look at the video on driving on curvy roads and how to do that. And one of the things 
there's a couple of techniques. First of all, you need to slow down so you get more traction on the curves. The next thing you want to do is if it's not possible to straighten the curve out, the other thing you want to do is you want to stay to the outside, the top side of the curve, because what that will allow you to do is you're going through more distance on the curve as opposed to taking the inside line and you're not going to have much. It's going to be harder on the car to get the car around there, so stay to the outside edge. That's another thing you want to do. So first, reduce your speed, stay to the top side of the curve, and then if you can, do what they do in um, NASCAR racing when they go top side, inside, outside, and that cuts, the, that straightens the corner out, and that's what you want to do, and that will give you more control in the corner. So that's how you take sharp curves uh, when you're driving in the car on the highway. Okay, uh, somebody else had a question here. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, Ashimer, if we were on the German Autobahn, how fast would you drive? If I was on the Autobahn? Man, if I was on the Autobahn, <laughs> I'd be going fast. Uh, yeah, um, even though I'm a driving instructor, there's one thing that I like. I like speed. It doesn't matter what kind of speed it is, whether it's on a bicycle, whether it's in a car, on skis. Yeah, I, yeah, I go. <laughs> okay. Uh, Latvia, how to brake smoothly. Okay, so Latvia, one of the things you want to do to learn how to brake smoothly is you want to start braking earlier. And that way, by braking earlier, you're not going to have to uh, brake as hard. So just know that. That's one of the things is you want to start earlier so that way you have more time to work and, that, and you have more time to be able to brake smoothly. Rohan, why do you think winter tires are a scam? Do you, just let me know that. I'm curious, okay? Edgar, uh, give me some tips on maintaining speed. There is a video here, Edgar, on uh, controlling speed on the YouTube channel, and Corey may find that for you here. Have a look for that. Uh, no snow in New York, uh, and Sam said that they're having some nice days there. What is Sam? What is a, what is a nice day in terms of? <laughs> uh, I guess uh, it's almost winter time. Not quite the 21st of December for those of us in the northern hemisphere. Um, Luad, uh, if you, how far from the stop sign or intersection should you start braking, say at around 20, 25 miles an hour? Uh, probably, Luad, depending on the traffic situation, just as a rough estimate, probably a block back, maybe half to a block, I might even say a block. Uh, the earlier you start braking, the more control you're going to have because uh, you have time to work then right and you can slow the vehicle down and then sort of creep up right it's it's studies have shown that vehicles that are moving forward are less likely to get rear-ended as opposed to vehicles that are completely stopped so if you just kind of creep up to the light until it changes then you're probably going to be all right so that's that's an approximate it really depends on the um the traffic situation as i said Andy, what is instant fail? Anything that's a dangerous action, uh, disobeying regulatory signs, speeding for uh, any length of time, you do have a short, you do have a short period of time that you can be over the speed limit, but you need to adjust it very quickly. So those are some of the automatic fails. Anything that's a dangerous action that in, uh, jeopardizes the safety of other road users or jeopardizes the safety of yourself is going to be an automatic fail. Uh, late 40s and some 50s in the temperatures. Yeah, that's fairly nice. It's a little bit colder here. It's probably around 36 here most days. Uh, okay. New Blitz. Uh, what you want to do is you want to look at the video, both the uh, driver's license test for winter driving and how to pass your road test. Both of those videos go through the details of what to expect on a road test in more detail than what I can give you here. But essentially, you're going to show up. You're going to go and check in. You're going to pay the fee. The examiner is going to go out. And depending on where you are, uh, are you in the States, New Blitz? Because if you're in the States, it's only about 8 to 10 minutes for the drive. You're going to do parallel parking or one other slow speed maneuver in that short period of time. And one of them is guaranteed is reverse stall parking. You're going to back into a parking space either at this uh, test center or somewhere else. So know that that's all part of it. Okay. All right, and <laughs> yep, 
Yes, Mr. Netrevin, that is great. And thank you again for the $5. That is awesome. Super chat. Super chat is always available. And that is an excellent point. And that's a point that I need to reiterate that Mr. Mc uh, Mr. Netrevin made about passing semi trucks on highways. Do not linger beside semi trucks. Get up and get past them because uh, there's another video that I'm going to do here, and I want to thank Corey for sending this to me about things falling off the back of trucks. Not so much vans, which is like a cube trailer on the back of a truck, but flat deck trucks. Uh, you know, unfortunately, things fall off the back of these things more than we would like to know. So. Um, yeah, that's a good point by Mr. Matre Mr. Netrevin there about getting past big trucks. Just get past them and carry on with your life and carry on. <laughs> Sam, I'm working on my French. My kid, both my kids speak French. I probably, you know, I speak a little more than most people, but no, I don't really speak French. <laughs> Edgar, how long? How old was I when I got my license? When I got my, I was 17 when I got my license. Man, I couldn't wait. I was. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was. I wanted to get my license. So I was 17 when I got my first license. And that would have been my car license. Then I got my motorcycle license. Then I got my straight truck license. Then I got my truck tractor trailer license. And then in 1997, I got a driving instructor's license. Matthew, thank you so much. Your videos helped me pass my road test. I took my road test on the 28th of October and I passed first try. I want to know what are some tips I need to know on the roadways. Uh, Matthew, there's a video here. 10 tips uh, for remaining crash free. One of the things that I always encourage new drivers to hang on to after they get their license is continue to shoulder check, continue to look forward, uh, stay in the right lane, drive the flow of traffic because it's it's safer to drive the flow of traffic than it is to drive the speed limit because if you're driving this, the speed limit, you're going to be having cars passing you all the time and you're being unpredictable and those types of things. But hang on to shoulder checking, hang on to observation because that's really going to uh, keep you safe while you are you have your license after you start learning how to drive and those types of things. And if you're in comf uncomfortable in any situation after you get your license and you are driving on the highways or you're driving in a, in a situation or scenario that you're not quite comfortable with, what I suggest is, is getting a friend or somebody who's got some experience and is a veteran driver and get them to go out with you and just maybe help you out a little bit and give you some tips and strategies that may help you out. But definitely observation and communication, those two things are really key uh, to remaining crash free after you get your license. Okay, JFSA, how much leeway does the examiner have in terms of tests, count and parameters? Uh, you know, JFA, you know, I'm going to say this. Okay. So, they say that all driving examiners and driving authorities, and I think Sam would agree with me on this, will say that the test is objective and the test is not objective. If you are unable to demonstrate that you can have due care and control of the vehicle, you are not going to pass a road test. And examiners will find a way to fail you because you are not good. But if you have most things together and say that you back it in parallel park and you bump the curb and then you pull forward and adjust, that demonstrates that you have awareness about the vehicle and space and place. They're not gonna they're not gonna fail you for that. So if they feel that you're unsafe, they're gonna fail you. If you're you've got all the fundamentals in place and they feel that you're gonna be okay, then they're gonna pass you. So know that for the purposes of road test. They have a fair driving examiners have a lot of discretion in terms of who they pass and who they don't pass. Okay, Rohan, Rohan, why would anyone get insurance when it is Ricky is high? Who is joining me and taking the bus to school? <laughs> yes, uh, Rohan, you're talking to the choir here because I'm a driving instructor. I've been a driving instructor for a long time and I don't get any discounts for that on my insurance. My insurance is crazy expensive. Okay, who else we got here? Ugh. What happened? Oh, <laughs> I hope I'm still there. I'm coming back. My live stream just popped out on me. I'm getting used to my new mouse. Okay, everybody's still here. Perfect. Ivan, you are most welcome. Merci beaucoup. De rien. Okay, Walter. 
You have a question. Yes, you found out I was live streaming. Yes, I am live streaming. Is there anything should and should not do when using high beams to communicate by flashing them? Yes, one of the things I suggest to you, Walter, are you talking about uh, flashing semi trucks to tell them to come back in? Uh, because if you do, don't use your high beams. Turn your lights off and on because what happens is, is that you blur, the, the drivers in the semi truck is looking to come back in and you flash the high beams in the thing and you're like you, they get that right in the eyes okay so know that uh but other than that uh high beams walter the other thing i suggest is try and get them off as quickly as possible if there's oncoming traffic from the other direction that's going to help you out okay yes and sam totally agrees with me what i said i believe he's responding to my comment about uh, driving examiners and having discretion about who they feel is a good driver and should pass a road test and who shouldn't pass a road test. So it's about the fundamentals of driving. Do you have the fundamental components in place? Those four fundamental components that I always talk about in terms of being able to pass a road test. Uh, speed management, space management, observation and communication. Those four fundamentals of passing a road test. Are those in place? And if those are in place, then you're going to pass a road test. If you have some minor problems then they're going to overlook that and they're going to pass you but if you've got problems and they show that you just don't have it in place they're going to find a way to fail you so know that and as the other thing that i'm going to say about that is i was talking to one of the driving examiners down here uh and he was saying to me one day that the feedback that they give you the two or three things that they tell you is the reason that you failed a road test. Those two or three things, they're kind of sugarcoating it in terms of what they're giving you in terms of feedback. They're telling you that <laughs> you can't drive. They didn't fail you just because it was a willy-nilly reason. And, and uh, the other point that I'll make about this in terms of what we're just talking about, driving examiners. I used to do driving evaluations as part of doing driving rehabilitation when I worked at the hospital with a... Um, an occupational therapist her and I made good decisions together and we could tell whether people could be retrained or couldn't be re retrained so it's it's very much it's very subjective but it's based on seeing a lot of different drivers and what drivers are able to do well and what drivers aren't able to do well and one of the things that we got going on here in British Columbia is, is that the retraining and retesting that drivers have to take they're now going to allow them to take it in their own vehicle because a lot of the feedback and criticism that they got was that these drivers who were taking these exams had to take it in a different vehicle they had to take it in the test vehicle it was either the driving school or uh, the organization that was doing the testing and they were saying oh if it was my own vehicle uh, I wouldn't have made those things and the response we used to get that same thing was as people would say oh you know if I was in my own vehicle I wouldn't do that we used to say to them well how would being in your own vehicle prevent you from running a red light because this is sort of the thing that we were dealing with with drivers okay so know that all right uh, so this is one of the things that's that's coming in and that's kind of a long-winded um, explanation about driving instructors and driving examiners and people who are doing evaluations and those types of things okay we want you to be safe we want you to have your skill level at a certain level to be safe on the roadway because if we don't do our job unfortunately it's going to make you dangerous on the roadway and you could be at a high risk of having a collision okay all right and yes Okay, Walter, I'm talking about anyone, cars, pedestrians, even during the daytime. Thanks for your help. Uh, Walter, in the daytime, I wouldn't recommend that you have your high beams on. I do recommend that you have your lights on because it helps you to be seen and makes you safer. And studies have been done in terms of vehicles pulling out from side streets in front of you. They're less likely to pull out in front of you and give you a greater distance to pull out if you have your lights on and that's one of the reasons why they've mandated in a lot of countries here in Canada and other countries in the world I think it's Sweden as well all cars there have to have daylight running lights so I suggest that you just have your daylight running lights on or you have your low beams on but don't don't run your high beams during the day uh, or any time at night that there's lots of other traffic around okay uh, did I mention Vernon no I don't think I mentioned Vernon 
Okay, let's see. Handcrafted. How can I be sure I pass the first time I go? Well, practice, 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 and more practice. That's how you do it. And as well, uh, handcrafted. Make sure that before you go down for your road test, as I just as I mentioned earlier in the stream, you may not have been here at that point. Uh, seven to ten days before you go for your road test, book a mock road test. Go out with a driving instructor and get a mock road test. Go out for 60 minutes or 90 minutes and get them to give you feedback on your driving and your abilities uh, because driving instructors teach new drivers how to pass a road test every day. They know the specific skills that need to be in place and can tell you and give you feedback about the skills or abilities that you might have to strengthen in order to pass a road test. So that's what I suggest. And the other point that I make about that is book that road test or book that mock road test with a driving school a, a month in advance because uh, driving schools are busy and they may not be able to do it if you just wait until seven to ten days before your road test so book it early okay Andy what was the easiest driver's test for you <laughs> what was the easiest driver's test I don't think any of the driver's tests were easy for me uh, even Andy even when I moved to Australia and I had to take my driver's license again even that wasn't easy because I was on the other side of the road uh, and that was a bit challenging even though I could drive a big truck uh, it was still a bit challenging what was the easiest probably no I you know I don't think there were any easy ones they're all tough it's the you know even after all the experience I mean even now if I took a driver's test I'd, I'd still find it tough so yeah they're tough Ivan thank you so much for your lessons they are very helpful I'm now confident I'm ready for my road test in Washington DC next week that's awesome Ivan I'm really happy to hear that you're gonna do great okay yes I'm in Vernon I think you guys are having a discussion about where I am okay okay yes I'm fooling with my mouse here it's not working out for me okay Peter how can I pass the test using an SUV especially with parallel parking uh, Peter what kind of SUV are do you have is it a big SUV or is it like a mid-size SUV like my little Honda S CRV is it something like that Yoneso what do you think about the new key system for cars I think it's called smart keys do you think they're safer uh, Yoneso are you talking about the key fobs where they don't go in they just you just carry the fob around and have it in the car because I don't I'm not crazy about those <laughs> I always just leave it in the car because there's really no place to put it I don't find them convenient at all John uh, my dad was driving my mom drunk when I was 13 he killed her in my babies oh that's a terrible story uh, John that's that's uh, pretty easy oh my god that's just an awful story I'm really sorry my condolences yeah don't drink and drive okay Rohan Rick I passed my G2 today what car should I get BMW or Mercedes hmm <laughs> it doesn't matter Rohan either you're gonna look cool you're gonna look cool but you know my I would sort of lean towards the BMW a little bit but you know that's just me however the Mercedes in Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze a lot of you may not remember that was some years ago that was a very nice car busy beat I passed my road test. Mock road tests are crucial. My instructor took me on a test route for almost two months, so I knew the exam by heart. Still got nervous, but passed. Congratulations, Busy B. That is really awesome that you passed. Okay, Walter, I'm in US and New York State, and I did my road test last year. It took five minutes and consist consisted of nothing more than a three point turn in parallel parking on top of stop signs. It was easy for me. Yeah, that's that sounds like a pretty straightforward. Uh, test Toyota Honda Highlander yes it's pretty big uh, Peter what I suggest is just practice 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 and what I also suggest Peter is to go out and get some of those 36 inch tall one meter tall pylons rent some of those you can get three or four of them from the local rental shop for about ten dollars for the day and go to a parking lot and practice with those okay Sam I had a student today that has a test this Thursday I was steering for her a lot I told her she's not ready and she agreed with me she still wants to take the test <laughs> oh Sam we have our challenges don't we <laughs> uh, you're steering yes um, what is the best time to schedule for a road test mark uh, one of the times to schedule for a road test is a time when it isn't 
rush hour. So if you have, you live in a town where they have rush hour, uh, then I would suggest that you not uh, take it during rush hour. So if you can take it at a time of day that it's not quite rush hour. And the other thing that I would su suggest to you is to make sure that you practice during the time of day when you're going to be taking your driving tests. The gamer guy, road tests are crazy busy to book in Ontario. Where are you in Ontario, gamer guy? Are you in Toronto or one of the bigger urban centers? Because yeah, if you're in one of the bigger urban centers, it's going to be a bit tough for you. Uh, she wants the license already. Yes, she's not ready, but she wants the license. She's not ready to do the work, but she wants the license. Yeah, we, we come up against that, don't we, Sam? Uh, irresistible frog is it okay to merge onto a highway with a 60 kilometer speed if there were no cars I failed my test because of that absolutely not Irre irresistible frog I'm sorry but uh, you have to get the vehicle up to speed and most if not all acceleration lanes will allow you to get the vehicle up to the posted speed limit and that's why you failed because you merged out onto a, a highway when it was not safe if you had misinterpreted or not seen the other vehicles on the roadway you could have caused a crash so that's why because that is considered a dangerous action so sorry to hear about your unsuccessful attempt <laughs> Carlos, can whoever is spamming please say who they are? Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, Carlos. I mean, we're talking about um, digital vandalism. Okay. Michael, during rush hour, the test would take longer. It could. Yeah, even in Hamilton is a month's wait. Yeah, that's not unlikely, gamer guy, that it would take you a month in Hamilton. That's a fairly busy urban center. And I suspect the other thing about that gamer guy is a lot of people from Toronto who can't get... Uh, road tests in Toronto are booking road tests in Hamilton to try and shorten the amount of time that they have to wait. So, yeah. No, Michael. Uh, 60 kilometers an hour is 40 miles an hour. It's not 60 miles an hour. Uh, it's uh, 0.6217. <laughs> so, whatever the miles per hour is, it just times it by 0.62 and you'll get a, whatever the kilometers is. Uh... Busy B, I did my test at 10.40 a.m. when my brain was sharp. I suggest to do it at the time of day that you are not tired when, of course, traffic is at its minimum. Yes, that is excellent, Busy B, because some of us are morning people and some of us are night owls. And if you're a night owl, then I would suggest that you take your road test later in the day. If you're a morning person like myself or other people, then I would suggest taking the road test when you're going to be the most sharp don't take it when you're tired okay try and take it uh, when you're fresh and ready to go and the other thing is make sure you just get a good night's sleep make sure you eat breakfast you're not jittery if you got um, some other illness or medication that you have to take make sure you take your medication and all those types of things so everything's on par and you're ready to take your road test and whatnot Yunessa, do you have to use the parking brake every time you park during your road test? Yes, you do, Yunessa. Every time you park the vehicle, make sure that you put the vehicle into a forward gear if you're driving a manual transmission. If you're driving an automatic, put it in park and apply the parking brake because they're going to think that you're going to leave the vehicle and it needs to be secure. And you should get in the habit of using the parking brake anyway, regardless of whether you're driving an automatic or a manual transmission. It's a really good habit to get into because it's hard on your transmission to just put it into park and have it lay on the transmission it's just a nice backup if you have that parking brake on and there's actually a video here on the channel have a look at that on parking brakes and that too uh, will tell you the reasons why and give you more detail about that <laughs> okay <laughs> Yes, it is, Sam. That's a great answer. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes, Michael, I think Japan is in uh, the metric system, so everything's in kilometers per hour. Okay, I think we're getting near the end here, and I'm just going to wrap up, and I want to thank everybody for all the questions, all the uh, contribution to keeping smart drive tests going here and, <laughs> and your patience with, I had my technical challenges with getting the new computer and the OBS working and whatnot. Um, so uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, just answer any questions that anybody has. Okay, I failed because of the parallel park when I got in, 
successfully I backed up into the cone. Yeah, okay, sorry to hear that, Gamer Guy. Yeah, uh, one of the other things, Gamer Guy, that I would suggest to you is, is when you're backing up, make sure you're looking out the back window, okay? Yeah, okay, there you go. There we go. All right, so we're gonna wrap up here. Uh, again, if you watching on the replay, hit that thumbs up button. If you like the channel, make sure you subscribe. Uh, we've got big lofty goals this year. We're gonna get everything going here. <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, ir ir Irresistible Frog. I'm having trouble saying irresistible. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you everybody else for showing up and as well like I said I'm getting the successful uh, smart drivers up on the website and I'm gonna keep on top of that so I uh, uh, congratulations everybody that's passed the road test in the last week in the last month or so uh, good luck to all of the people taking a road test this week and uh, we look forward to talking to you on the comments there on the YouTube channel and over on Facebook and remember good luck on your road test and remember pick the best answer not necessarily the right answer have a good night Bye now.